All right, guys. Um, Henry, good to see you back. Welcome you back. Um, you know, obviously, it was an important win for us. I mean, that goes without saying. I think just as important as the win, though, and the message with our team, uh, just another example of how we have to win. That, 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 is, that is who we are. Um, again, the margin for error is what the margin for error is. Uh, but, um, you know, the season's been, uh, I've used the term herky-jerky, kind of stop and start. Um, you know, we lost the second game of the year down in Las Cruces, a game, uh, you know, we all thought we could win. Uh, you know, then we had the open date after Rutgers. We get beat by Rutgers. You know, we got beat in the first half so convincingly against Boise State. We've had a lot of injuries. You know, we haven't talked much about it, but we have had a lot of injuries. Um, uh, that's why this win was so big, you know, because it has been kind of herky-jerky. It has not been what we probably hoped it would be in the big picture. And now maybe we have a chance to get some momentum um, with six games left, no open dates, uh, and hopefully get on a roll, which is, uh, you know, right now, um, Louisiana Monroe saying the same exact thing. You know, they're just coming off the win against uh, Texas State. So um, we're like a lot of teams, you know. We, we, we've battled. We've had some adversity. We've had some things go unexpected. We've done some good things. And we're just like we started the season. You know, we're three and three uh, with the chance to move forward. Uh, you know, just again how we win. Uh, you know, Air Force was second in the nation uh, in rushing um, – in rushing defense. We talked about it last week. The question was brought up. Um, you know, I think we ran for more yards in the first two plays of the game than Navy did the entire game against them. You know, rushed for, I think, 380 yards in that game. Um, so that's how we win. Uh, no turnovers in the game. Uh, three penalties. Air Force had four. Uh, we made some things happen in the kicking game. You know, the four kickoff returns for 160 yards. Uh, just as importantly, every time, you know, on three of those times, Air Force scored, um, trying to get momentum. Uh, Lily brings the thing back out and kind of snuffs out the momentum a little bit. So we started with good field position. Um, so there's an absolute blueprint to how we win and how we have and how we have to play to win. That that's that's who we are, uh, and and I think that message uh, has to ring loud and clear uh, with our players. Um, um, you know, the other ingredient we haven't gotten is create turnovers with our defense. And there's been a bit of a drought in that area. So that's the, that's the other piece of it that's missing. So, you know, moving forward to Monroe, um, you know, we, we do have some injuries. I mean, you, you, you look at just an amazing thing. Uh, you know, uh, Terry on Gibson's leading the country in yards per carry. He, I think he's only carried the ball 40 times all year in six games. Uh, didn't play too, but you put that in perspective of a guy like Terry on <laughs> that's carried the ball 40 times the whole season for us uh, and only nine carries, I think it was, against Air Force. Um, you know, Garrett Adcock didn't play. He won't play again this week. Uh, Lamar, I, I don't know. He, he did practice today. I do expect Lamar Jordan to play. Um, you know, Apodaca was out. Uh, you know, you flip it over to the defensive side. Uh, Santos will be out. Um, you know, Boatwright's back, but Ivy Brown is still out. Um, um, you know, so we're still fighting through the injury piece of it, uh, but I guess so is everybody else. So we got a chance now to, um, you know, hopefully get better, hopefully get better. Uh, I know the players feel much better about themselves. Uh, we all feel better about ourselves because we know what it was to go play in Dallas uh, against that team. And, and, and I'll say it one more time, just as a as a kind of a benchmark. I, I think I think we were one in seven in the eight years before we came here against Air Force, um, and that's through two coaches. And to be three and two. And to have an opportunity, really, that first year to, re quite honestly, be four and one. Of course, we could have lost a couple of the others. It is something we're all proud of because 
I'm going to tell you, against that team on that day, um, there's a lot of teams after what happened, particularly in the first half against Boise, but even if it didn't, uh, would have turned and run. You know, so um, we got a chance. We got a chance, and we just have to continue to fight to get better. So with that said, Rick? I think so, yeah. You know, um, you know, we planned on, again, playing Austin uh, in Dallas. But again, the flow of the game was so unique. You know, in those first two series, we go down there and score. It was really a triple option kind of game against the Air Force. Uh, we could have thrown it, particularly the way they were playing their safeties. But it, again, it's hard when, when you're running it the way we ran it. Um, but yeah, the, the plan would be for both Austin and Lamar to play. I, I, you know, I hope that it's not an issue. You know, we, we certainly talked about it. Um, you know, I, I talked to our team about it. I said the first question I was asked on a radio show is, here's this break in the conference schedule. Um, you know, how are you going to address that? You know, are you going to bring up South Alabama, uh, beat San Diego State, uh, and San Diego State is undefeated otherwise? Are you going to talk about New Mexico State? Um, lost to UL Monroe the last game. Uh, you know, so I guess it is worth talking about, but I'm more interested in us and what we have kind of been through and where we have a chance to go to now. You know, so rather than kind of take the, oh no, this is going to happen approach, I'd, I'd much rather focus on us being mature and us being able to just take advantage of, um, you know, the difference in feeling between winning and losing. Uh, never ceases to amaze me. So hopefully just that feeling. Um, but, um, you know, people ask those questions for a reason because a lot of times that ends up happening. But I hope we can fight through it just because of our past experiences and, again, us knowing what our margin for error is. I hope. I hope, but again, I think more than that, uh, we still are who we are. <laughs> again, that, that br blueprint of how we win, uh, you know, the famous momentum thing or the 12th man thing only goes so far. You know, it still comes down to playing. And we really do, we really do have to get so much better. You know, there still continues to be things that happen th that shouldn't happen. But yeah, I, 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 again, you know, I, I hope that winning a game like that you know, on the road against a respected team when we were kind of backed in a corner. You know, I, I certainly hope that it does provide. It has provided energy for everybody. I can tell you that right now, just coming off the practice field, um, just coming in Sunday with the kids again and doing what we do on Sundays. You know, it's definitely provided energy. You talked about last week being a couple option game where you didn't have as much success. So when tomorrow we're coming out, is there any consideration of putting Jawan in there? And uh, I brought it up, you know, and we talked about putting Jawan in. And I think, um, you know, we've kind of had this scenario before, uh, you know, at the end of the San Jose State game when we had just been up and down the field and then we kind of bogged down in the fourth quarter with the lead. Uh, we had it at New Mexico State a little bit. You know, we had the lead and then we didn't, couldn't quite just get over the hump. Um, we had it at Rutgers a little bit, you know, in the four, you know, we bogged down a little bit. Uh, you know, particularly on against the Air Force, you know, it was having that lead going into the wind. Um, we were backed up, not wanting to make a mistake, and that allowed those safeties to just run down into that box. I mean, it was unbelievable. You know, both those safeties were up there so tight. And there were opportunities to throw the ball. Uh, there were opportunities to get the ball out on the perimeter. Um, and, and that's something we've certainly researched. You know, we can't get in a game where a team just says, hey, let's play the whole game like that you know, where, where, where we know they're going to run it, we know they're going to hand it, let's just keep everybody in the box. So we continue to add to our package. Uh, and, and again, I think just back to the, to the Air Force game, you know, if, if, and I know there probably are some somewhere, some of those triple option geek, geeks out there, you know, that really study it. There were some amazing things schematically from both teams to false key the other team. You know, when some of those plays came that it was just, oh my gosh, where is, 
on both sides. I mean, it was, it was an unbelievable thing of two defenses that are locked in that all of a sudden there's like a false key or something different that you've never seen. And it never ceases to amaze me how, um, you know, the, 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 the schematic piece of the triple option can carve you. And it was really both teams doing that. And both defenses getting back on their heels because, whoa, what just happened? You know, my key told me to do this, but this happened. Their second play of the game, they did it to us. And right off the bat, you know, we were, we were back on our heels and never really did get back in sync, quite honestly, until they got into a passing situation at the end. Uh, but it kind of happened with both teams. But to answer your question now, you know, you do have to continue to keep people off balance in your own way. That doesn't necessarily mean throwing the ball if you really want to throw it, but you've got to be able to get the ball out in the perimeter and do some things. And we do have answers. We just got a little bit uh, conservative there at the end against the Air Force. I understand their quarterback is out, the starting quarterback is out. He is. Does that change anything? You know, uh, we saw the play, obviously, where the quarterback, the starter, got hurt against Texas State. He, he took a heck of a lick. I mean, he really did. And it's unfortunate because he's a tough, competitive, competitive player. Uh, the backup uh, did come in, a redshirt freshman from Oklahoma, uh, did come in and play three and a half quarters. I, I think the starter got hurt the, the, the 26th play of the game. And, and the, 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 the now starter played the rest of the game, so we got a pretty good look at him. They're not a whole lot different in their style of play. They're both pretty similar. So I don't think, um, I don't think much will change in how they do things. Um, obviously, the question, just like us going into games, if one quarterback's down, um, how you call plays with that quarterback, because then you're to the third quarterback if something happens to that one. You know, but other than that, they look pretty similar to me. And the kid came in and, you know, threw a touchdown pass right off the bat, uh, did some things running the football, played with great energy. The team seemed to rally around him, uh, Monroe. So I, I don't think there'll be much change. He's electric. You know, you go back to that high school highlight tape that you guys should all put on and watch. Um, yeah, you know, I think we have to try to be creative with him. Uh, the problem right now, quite honestly, is with I.B. Brown out, um, with Boatwright uh, coming back from a year and two years away from football, really, and getting thrown into that fray against the Air Force and then getting dinged in the Air Force game. and had to, you know, We're so short at corner that we can't do much with uh, Elijah Lilly other than get him ready to be the next corner in the game. But I think down the road, without a doubt, uh, he has to touch the football in some packages on offense because I think he's going to prove to be a guy that isn't kind of a one-hit wonder. You know, I think he's a guy that is going to be that guy moving forward. But right now, we're just so thin, so thin in the secondary that we can't mess with him. We've got to get him. He's going to play. He's going to play because that same tenaciousness you saw, he's a fearless guy. And we need that in the secondary. You know, we, we need a little more of that, 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 that kind of just playmaking kind of ability. He's going to return kicks, though? Yeah, he's going to return kicks. You must be happy with Sanders, too, and what he's doing so far, kicking in the end zone yeah. times and making a field goal. And, uh, yeah, I think that's a great point. Um, you know, he missed the one field goal at Rutgers. Other than that, we've seen for a couple years now the kind of weapon he is on kickoffs. You know, I mentioned we had four for 160 kickoff returns. They had one for 22. Kicking into the same wind they were and kicking with the same wind. And then that, that 49-yard field goal that took, kept it from being eight points if he misses to 11-point march. And as we all know, that, that two-score differential was big in that game. So he drilled that 49-yarder, and we all saw it could have been good from, from a lot longer. Yeah, he's, he's a weapon. He's, he's a weapon. Kind of playing off the kicking game, I have a coaching philosophy question for you. What's your uh, thought process on going for two? Not unless it's needed. You have you know, guys in the NFL like Tomlin who go for it every time. Yeah. Um, you guys are one of the best rushing teams in the country. I mean, but from a coaching standpoint, don't go for two unless you have to or – yeah, I think it's all just how it's going. But, we, you know, I'm, I'm still stay with that chart. 
I'd like to go for it every time. I'm, I'm always that one on fourth down or on, you know, two-point conversion. You know, I, I'd like to go for it every time. But I really do kind of stick by that chart because, you know, you're sitting there in the first quarter and there's a reason that chart that every coach, <laughs> every coach in the country uses that chart. So it usually comes back to bite you. You know, there's pretty good research gone into that. So, you know, but it's always a flow of the game kind of thing, and it's always kind of a momentum feel. And it's what's working, you know. It's, it's what's working. Can you, make, can you make it? Coach, on the offensive line, you started the season with some question marks about the team. And what do you think, at this point, halfway pretty much through the season, what do you give them a grade right now where they are? I think the grade is definitely benefited by the quickness and the suddenness of those backs <laughs> and by the scheme and by the scheme. I think, again, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing to me when you look at how an Avery Jordan, who had no spring practice here, zero spring practice, walks in here in August. He goes in and plays an entire football game in Air, against the Air Force, and you don't skip a beat. Replaces a guy that's a 50-year senior. I look at Blaze Fountain at center, who came in from Butler Community College, had a broken thumb. He goes. Um, um, Chris Lewis, who was a defensive player basically this year at this time, is the left guard in there. So it's kind of remarkable. I mean, it really is. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of things. As I mentioned, we have really, really good backs. Uh, but um, in the run game, really good. Uh, in the pass game, uh, still a work in progress to try to be able to protect the passer if people know we're going to throw it. But if you really look closely at that roster and you look at some of these stories, um, you have to say it's an A-plus on what they've accomplished based on kind of the uniqueness of some of these pieces. Because as I mentioned before the season, um, you know, we're still a little bit behind there, um, trying, to, trying, to, trying to work through some things. and. Uh, uh, so it's been good, you know. We, we, we brought an offensive line coach in in, in late July, uh, middle of July, which is unheard of. Uh, so, so, so pretty good, pretty good. Coach, you were, you were kind of upset during the game on the replay when they, were, uh, when they kept uh, trying to uh, review the film on plays. It yeah. was taking four or five minutes. Yeah. Uh, I can tell that. You could see you were getting frustrated. What, what do you think? What, I don't know, you know, um, I, I think a lot of it may have to do, and Paul may know more than I do, but I think what happens is the, the, you know, obviously the number of cameras that are at the game, you know, and ESPN News is not going to have the cameras that the ESPN primetime Saturday night game has. And I think there's a bit of trying to find a good angle, and it's a lot easier when you probably have 15 camera angles to choose from in that booth. But it did take it did take an extraordinarily long time to me. It really did. Yeah, I thought the same thing. Looking at the tape after the game, I thought that there were some that were reviewed that really were. Um, and really, I don't think there wasn't one overturned, right? I don't think there was a call overturned, and all of them were on our situation where it benefited us that it wasn't overturned. Yeah, the fumble by Tyrone. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There, there definitely was a, and again, you know, not to, um, as you saw, I mean, that sun was coming straight across, and our fans and our team and our, everybody were in that sun, and it was a, anybody that went to that game thinking it was going to be a three-hour game because both teams were running the ball, it wasn't that. I mean, it was a long, long game, and I don't know that I've been in one where the reviews were that long, that many. I do think of the Boise State one a couple years ago here on fourth down that was long. But that was the only one in the game. It, 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 was, it was a long, long time. Who do you compare them to, UL and Michigan? Is there a team that you've seen that? Um, they're, they're schematically like New Mexico State, similar to style of offense, uh, very similar to several teams we play. You know, they're the spread 11 personnel with one tight end, three wide receivers. They have two good running backs. They're a zone read kind of team. Um, 
throw a lot of jailbreak screens, the, the wide receiver tunnel screen with the lineman releasing downfield. Um, they'll remind you of New Mexico State, I think, just in how they set up. And then on defense, they're a four-man front. They've got an extremely veteran defensive staff. Um, really, really good coaches on defense, guys that have been around a while, a long time. I mean, they're, they're a very well-coached team. Pat Reed, Pat, I'm glad you noticed that. Uh, Pat, Pat Reed, you know, we completed three passes in that game. And those wide receivers continue to have to do things that wouldn't be first on their list if you're a wide receiver to do. And Pat Reed has been really good. You know, loves doing it, um, plays with a lot of energy, a lot of emotion. He is, he is outstanding. Emmanuel Harris is really good, really aggressive, tough, will go after you. Um, Hugh Drennan works at it. Uh, Quarles isn't 100 percent. We'll work at it. But but Pat Reed and Emmanuel Harris are the two that really, really are excellent excellent blockers, and they work hard at it. They work hard at it and take pride in it. Uh, on, speaking of seeing it on TV, the uh, stands where you guys were looked a lot like what we're looking at right now. <laughs> uh, the Air Force side, but yeah. was it worth it to do that? Was it worth it to go to Dallas? I told Troy Calhoun before the game, I said, you owe me one. <laughs> I said, you know, I wanted to go to Colorado Springs so badly. Because, you know, they've won 12 in a row, I think, at home. And I wanted to go break that streak. So I said, you owe me one. You talked us into coming to Dallas, and I will forever appreciate this. And he looked at me like I was crazy. But uh, no, you know, I think, it, again, it was my eighth time in that Cotton Bowl. It's the first time there's ever been an empty seat in there for me. Every, every other game there was sold out. But after the game, I was happier than I've ever been. I love it. I'd go back there and play next week. And, and I'll say this, you know, our fans, you saw the ones behind the bench. I don't want to say the smart ones, but they were up there under that shade over that overhang where you couldn't see them on the TV copy. We were well represented there. We really were. I mean, our fans were into it. They stuck around after the game. And on the flip side, the Air Force side, it was pretty impressive. I mean, it was, it was about what we'd have had in Colorado Springs or what we'd have had about here. It's just we're playing in a cavernous 90,000-seat stadium. But, but, and I will say this, um, because I think it's worth mentioning, the logistics on the trip, it was like we were playing in the Cotton Bowl, the true Cotton Bowl. I mean, the, 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 the travel, uh, the hotel, um, the escort, to the hotel, the Dallas PD, from the hotel to the stadium, through the fairgrounds, all the people out of the stadium to Love Field. It was a first class game. And I know our players appreciated that and it was definitely, definitely uh, worth doing it. Again, Troy had to talk me into it because I was all set to go up to Falcon Stadium. <laughs> all right. Anybody else? Henry, you got to come with one now. Cam Just how we blocked? A couple, you know, you notice Cole Gauchy one time on a big touchdown, got a great block down on downfield. We were consistent. We didn't have a penalty. We had one false start, but it was the running back, Tyrone Owens. Our snaps were good. So a very efficient, our most efficient job by our offensive line start to finish against a really good defensive team. I mean, the Air Force, Air Force is good. Um, so. Uh, impressed and a chance to build. You know, now we've got big Avery Jordan in there. Um, you know, he, we look like a good looking, big physical offensive line now with Reno, Chris Lewis, Blaze Fountain at center, uh, um, um, Aaron Jenkins at guard, and then Avery Jordan at tackle. Uh, Charlie Grammel comes in and plays a little bit. We're just ridiculously thin after that. But, w w you know, we made some progress and hopefully we can continue that. All right, guys. Appreciate it, man.